In an incredibly cutthroat sector of the automotive business, here's the knife that Kia wields, the all-new Rio. We've got the top trim, the SX. Let's drive it and check the tech. Now the inside of the Rio looks a bit like their upscale cars. They've got the chrome trim and the sporty kind of shapes. You definitely don't get a downscale feeling, but remember, we're in an SX, we're at the top trim. That premium package also rolls in a rear camera, though I think you get a rear camera optionally on the EX, the lower model. As you can see, it's a nice clear rear image, but there's no trajectory projection, just three different distance lines and no fancy camera angles. As for the nav itself, we've seen this before. It's a well-rendered, if a little bit busy looking system, but it's got a nice, easy to read set of street names. Roads are pretty well displayed, so they're clear. This car does not have the UVO voice command system, which is one that they did with Microsoft. Please select the respective line. Instead, I preferred to jump here on the old fashioned buttons and just start entering things with the touchscreen, which moves quite nicely. By the way, this works while you're driving. Not that I want you to be doing that, but your passenger can get on it. And all your other ancillary buttons for doing things are nice and big and clear. I like that about this system. Now, in terms of drive electronics in this vehicle, you've got a one choice only six speed automatic here, shiftable gate, pretty garden variety stuff, no paddles even on this SX Sports Edition. Over here, this button says Active Eco. That takes you in or out of an economy mode where it really dials back throttle response and generally shapes the engine response curve to sip gas. What you don't have in this car is the auto start stop technology. That doesn't come on the Sport model, this SX. Okay, now our audio sources. Being a Kia or Hyundai, you've got this guy here, this aux USB right next to each other that use a special cable that can go into your iOS device. Or, of course, you can go one or the other thumb drive or aux cable. AM and FM radio, no HD radio on this guy. Satellite radio is serious. That also powers the live traffic to the nav system. Three months complimentary when you buy a new one of these. Optical disc is up here for your CDs only. You've got Bluetooth hands-free, but there is no Bluetooth streaming. Four speakers is standard in a Rio, and then you get these two guys in the pillar for a total of six. These tweeters are SX only. A couple other touches we have in a premium package, which is where we got the navigation system. Brings you this power glass roof up here. This push button start stop, leave it in your pocket, wireless key, and these heated leather seats. Now let's go check out the engine bay. Now under the hood here is a pretty good example of mainstream modern engine making circa 2012. A sub 2 liter engine, 1.6 in this case, inline 4, side saddle, driving the front wheels of course. Direct injection, allowing them to get 138 horsepower and 123 foot pounds of torque out of this guy. 2500 pound car, gets up to 60 in around mid 7s, high 7s. And that while delivering 30, 40 MPG. 40 is the magic number. If you hit that, you're in a special club. By the way, if you get the lower trim version, the EX, you're going to also have the auto start stop technology applied here. But all it gains you is one MPG city, so eh. Okay, let's take a little spin in our Kia Rio. Now, I tried to come up with some headline for what this car drives like, and I couldn't. It just drives fine. There's nothing bad about it, nothing notably good about it. It's not terribly sprightly. It's not terribly sluggish. The ride quality is not harsh. The ride quality is not amazingly nice. Eh, it's a very nice, compact car. Visibility is actually quite good, if that matters to you. But there's a couple things that I would call out that are interesting. That MPG number, I'm at what, mid-31s right there? That's actually low. When I was on a trip over a lot of mountainous highways and shifting it manually a lot, I was around 33, 34. I couldn't beat the 30s out of this thing. It does really well in actual driving fuel economy, and that's a big part of why you buy this car. I did find that I missed paddle shifters, which I often consider to be a gimmick, but on this car it rewards manual shifting when you need to get some really significant response out of it. The only other note I would make is that as you drive this car, you don't get the feeling you're in as inexpensive a car as it is, largely because of the interior appointments on this SX trim level. They've really done a good job, I think, for the amount of money they're extracting from your pocket. Oh, by the way, taking off the eco button didn't make a big difference in my estimation. The car behaves about the same way, maybe a little less sluggishly. To get the high MPG that it does, it of course clings to the highest gear it can possibly countenance. 
Okay, let's price our cheap and cheerful 2013 Kia Rio SX. This is the top trim car, 18.5. Uh, Antoine's pork pie not included. On top of that, you are going to get the premium package or you're an idiot. It's an incredible value. 2350 brings you navigation, rear camera, push button start, wireless key, power glass roof, heated leather seats. Are you kidding? Of course you will.